The Brennan's monorail, also known as the gyro monorail, stands as a testament to human ingenuity in the realm of transportation innovation. Conceived by the Irish engineer Louis Brennan in the late 19th century, this pioneering monorail system represented a bold departure from conventional railway technologies of its time. Brennan's vision was to create a mode of transportation that could overcome the limitations of traditional rail systems, offering enhanced stability, maneuverability and efficiency. The key component of Brennan's monorail is the gyroscope, a fast-spinning flywheel mounted within the carriage. As the monorail vehicle moves along the track, the gyroscopic forces generated by the spinning flywheel produce a stabilizing effect resisting deviations from the desired trajectory, ensuring smooth and controlled motion. In Brennan's monorail system, the gyroscopic forces generated by the spinning flywheel act to stabilize the vehicle by counteracting external disturbances such as lateral forces, gradients and curves on the track. By harnessing the gyroscopic effect, the monorail achieves enhanced stability, maneuverability and safety compared to conventional rail systems. Though Brennan did an amazing job solving most of the issues with his train, it was hard to convince investors that the monorail was safe due to its over-reliance on the gyroscopes being on at all times. The question is, were they right to pass on the monorail because of that? Take for instance a commercial airplane, we could say that the single point of failure would be the turbines, hence most planes have two. If one fails, the other can still maintain flight. Now if both fail, the plane is still designed to glide for kilometers depending on the altitude and can still land safely somewhere. With the Brennan monorail, the system relies entirely on the gyroscopes to be rotating at all times. This alone introduces various safety concerns. The first main consideration is the catastrophic loss of the gyroscopes. At face value, relying on something to be on at all times sounds like an incredible accident waiting to happen, but the truth may not be as discouraging. Let's consider what would happen in total loss of power condition. At the time, Brennan developed its gyroscope using electromotors to spin the heavy wheels. This meant that for the train to work, it would have to receive constant electricity either internally or externally. Electric tram cars were already a thing and could easily solve the power problem. However, in his concepts, he used a diesel engine to power the monorail, which made sense to demonstrate not only its feasibility, but also its independence of any external help. The vehicle was balanced by two vertical gyroscopes mounted side by side and spinning in opposite directions at 3000 rpm. Each flywheel had 1 meter in diameter and weighed 750 kilograms each. They were enclosed in airtight casings in which a high degree of vacuum was maintained. At 750 kilograms each, the gyroscopes possess significant rotational inertia, meaning they resist changes in their rotational motion. Even if power to the electromotors is suddenly cut off, the gyroscope would continue spinning due to its inertia. Its deceleration would be gradual, taking several minutes for it to stop. Question is, would it be long enough for a safe evacuation? To answer this question, we can use a formula to calculate how long it would take for the spinning flywheel to stop. To calculate the time, we need the initial angular velocity in radians minus the final angular velocity divided by the angular deceleration. Since there is no way to know for sure the angular deceleration of the flywheel, we will assume a range of values from 0.001 to 1. Starting with an angular deceleration of 0.001, it would take about 87 hours for the wheel to completely stop. More than enough time for everyone to exit safely from the vehicle. Furthermore, it's more than enough time for emergency response to show up. At the worst condition, however, it would take half a minute to completely stop, which in practice means the mother of all derailments. It is safe to assume that Brennan considered all scenarios as he knew that safety was a major concern for this mode of transportation, hence why he designed the flywheel to be encapsulated in a vacuum casing where friction was incredibly minimized. Most likely, the angular deceleration was well within the 0.1 radians per second, which meant that it would completely stop within 52 minutes. 
Brennan himself at the time assured investors that even with complete power failure, the flywheels would work for hours. As we can see, catastrophic power loss would cause little to no problems. So far, everything holds up, but what happens if the gyroscope explodes? The flywheel in Brennan's gyroscope system would experience continuous stress while spinning, leading to cyclic loading and unloading of the material. This repetitive stress can gradually weaken the material, leading to metal fatigue over time. The material composition of the flywheel, typically metal alloys, can play a significant role in determining its susceptibility to fatigue failure. Factors such as impurities, microstructure, and manufacturing defects can influence the material's fatigue resistance. Material fatigue is a big issue for any high RPM system, and that is especially true for heavy spinning flywheels. With two 750 kilograms, the rotational energy of the flywheel at 3000 RPM is equivalent to 500 grams of dynamite each. While one kilogram of dynamite sounds scary, this problem can be completely mitigated by a strong casing containing the explosion. However, while an explosion can be contained, the real problem is derailment. While losing only one flywheel the train could make a safe stop, losing both, once again, means the mother of all derailments. But of course, material science has come a long way. Such problems as material fatigue can easily be prevented with modern materials and precise engineering. Finally, Brennan's monorail wasn't a failure. It was just another invention that was way ahead of its time. What do you think? Would you still ride the monorail? <laughs>